Hi and welcome back. This is GMAX 1.2 for the beginning modeler, video number 25, part 4, and hopefully the final part of building the wings and its uh, components. The, the objective in this video is to set the pivots for the new wing parts, the flaps, the ailerons, split flap, etc. Uh, cut in navigation lights on the tips of the wings and uh, build a pito. And once we do that, we're, uh, we'll have to repropagate the wing to the other side. So let's get started. Uh, between the videos, I uh, uh, built the uh, air vents uh, guides, if you will, for the uh, front of the engine. Or front of the wings, I'm sorry. <clears throat> so I guess I should explain to you how I did that. So let's uh, see if I can do that quickly. It takes a little little time so I wanted to uh, do that between sessions and and uh, conserve the uh, video time. And essentially what I did here there's uh, eight of these vent guides if you will that uh, direct the air into the openings for the uh, coolers, intercooler, the uh, engine radiator, the oil cooler, and there's a flow through of air through the wing, through those coolers, and out the back of the wing out of that uh, split flap. So, with that said, let me give you a sense of what I went through quickly here to uh, to build this. I essentially just built the box with. Uh, eight or nine segments, I forget. <clears throat> but the real point here is is uh, we're going to uh, try to demonstrate how to to do this. So we'll just convert this editable piling. <clears throat> and we're going to take these edges in the center here and chamfer them kind of get the outside parts of these uh, vents and then uh, once we have that we'll select the polys so select the polys here that we've created out of, the, out of those edges through the chamfer and we'll just simply extrude them and you could actually Must have missed the button again. Uh, we'll extrude them out to. Uh, we'll do it a little better than I did before. I wasn't that satisfied with what I had before, but oh well. And then do another extrude. Whoops. <laughs> Hello, extrude. And uh, pull these into to be kind of pointy. And then that gives you the kind of the general shape that you want. And to improve on that a little bit, let's uh, grab vertices. See if this will let me do this the right way here. And I want to flare these out. I didn't do this. On, whoops, it's not doing it the way I wanted it to. At. Oh well, what I wanted to do was uh, give kind of a circular deal in here, but anyhow, you get the point. <clears throat> and once I had that, I basically went to the sides. <coughs> sides, let's see. Right side will, will work. Get up here so we can see what we're doing. And just killed all these uh, vertices here in the back. And that leaves me with this structure. <clears throat> and essentially we don't need the polys on the top and bottom because they're hidden. So let's see here. So we'll just delete them out. 
let's see, I can do it this way. There's a lot of ways to build stuff like this. So you just choose, choose something and go with it. You can delete out these polys. So we already have a backing in the wing. You may recall we built a, a backing for all this. So just delete out, delete these out. <coughs> isolated vertices yeah so there you have your your basic structure now we want to get rid of those top and bottom polys because they're unnecessary overhead because they're not going to be seen so we'll select all the ones we can see and then go up to select invert and that gives us our top and bottom polys that we can now delete so that's essentially what I did and then it's just a matter of uh, rotating this to fit into the wing slot where these are housed and uh, do some smoothing on it select all the vertices and <coughs> or all the uh, polygons and give it one smoothing group and uh, there you end up with kind of what I did so not a big deal uh, put them in place them eventually you want then to attach them which I uh, which I haven't done yet with these, <clears throat> but will to the wing, so they become part of the wing. Okay, that's uh, that's what we did there. Let's go back and unhide the uh, unhide by name, and I want everything that belongs to the wing here. So we'll do it for wing left. So there's uh, the result of that. Anyhow, and that looks. Uh, fairly decent. So let's go ahead and attach these. What do they call these? Wing vents or something? Yes. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and oops. Go ahead and select the wing and go up to modify and attach list wing vents. Okay, now they're a part of the wing so I don't have to worry about treating them as a separate part and uh, I, t I tried a while ago to uh, clone these the way I did the wing and the flaps and all that stuff and get them over to the other side could not do that could not make it work just goes to show you some things will forever befuddle us the other thing I did between uh, videos here is kind of cleaned up <coughs> uh, this mesh here for the flaps and the aileron and gave it a little show of curvature in there and also from the top cleaned up the uh, gaps that we need between this, the uh, various parts so they're free, free uh, you can have free movement unobstructed so that's kind of what I did while uh, after the last video and before this one the next thing we need to do is to change this uh, side this by category never use it I wish I could get rid of it but I haven't figured out how let's make that see-through and we can hide these other things here what we're going to do now is cut in nav lights so let's unhide the unhide by name and go pick up the uh, somewhere down here is a calibration box well let's go do it this way We'll find it under C. <clears throat> this drawing doesn't show it, but another drawing I have does. We also got to build this pita <clears throat> here. But we need a nav light in the front corner of this wing. Uh, so what we're going to do, it looks like, you know, sometimes depending on the shape of these polys, actually we could do it right here. Yeah, it'd be faster. And it, pretty much the same result. Uh, let's make sure back faces are turned off so we can select these. And let's just select this set of polys right here. Make sure we got the bottom selected to correctly. Okay. B and T for top. And we're just going to detach. We're going to call this um, Nav Light Lens Left. Okay, that's detached, and uh, we want to hide that so that we can fill in the hole that we just created, hide selected, 
And let's actually hide everything else too. Get it out of the way. Makes it easier to work. And a way to zoom around and when you're in close like this is select a vertice and you can not zoom around but uh, you can uh, rotate around the object <coughs> much easier when you have something in like this that's tight. So what we're going to do first is create a poly on the back of this cut. So let's go into polygon sub-object mode, create. Let's just I'm doing this one this way because it's easier than doing the side ones. They have more vertices. So we can just select a border now here and cap it. That makes a quick work of that. We'll do the same thing here. Create a ver uh, the back piece here. Now, just notice something. I just missed when I clicked, went to click on that vertice. And what it, what it does when you miss is it adds a vertice. So you think, oh, I missed that. I want to undo it. And you can right click or you can finish it and undo it. But it leaves that vertice there. So you got to make sure you back off on the undo in order to kill that vertice or you have to select it and kill it yourself. So just be aware you end up with a lot of uh, isolated vertices that way and that can really throw you off. Sometimes they'll be uh, 40, 50 feet away, 80 feet away. And you'll wonder why when you zoom in, you're not zooming in. Well, that's the reason why. So let's go back to create and see if we can kind of make sure that your uh, cursor becomes a fat plus there. And then you know you're on it. Okay, we've got that part done. Now let's uh, select that border and cap it. Let's <clears throat> see what it's doing down here for uh, smoothing. Nothing. Okay. Let's uh, just give this something. And 27, we'll give this a 28. We'll give this a 27. And it can be anything, it doesn't matter. As long as they're not the same number because these are 90 degree angles and you end up with some bad shading if you do that. So now you've got that hole filled in. We can go back and unhide the uh, Navlite lens. Hide by name. Navlite lens. Okay, we'll bring that back. Now that we've uh, <coughs> detach that from the wing, we need to link it back. So there it is, it's linked back. And we don't weld that back or anything. <clears throat> this ultimately is going to get uh, a glass type texture. So right now it's uh, set up as see-through, so if we go back to the wing and set it so it's not see-through, you can now see that that's a see-through object. Of course that's only temporary and for uh, in the in the Gmax, in order to make it see through, we have to add a uh, kind of a transparent or semi-transparent, translucent kind of uh, texture to it. And we'll do that later on. So we now have at least a nav light on the front corner of that wing. Okay, what else we need to do? We need to do a pito. So let's uh, go back to the top view here. Bring back in the uh, calibration box and hide by name. Calibration, calibration box. There it is. Okay, here we can see the pito static tube. Okay, so what we're going to do to create that, we're going to go to the front port, uh, front view port. And it sticks right there. So what we're going to do is just generate, create one. They're pretty simple to create. Uh, we're going to use a uh, a cylinder that is about 0 0.005. I don't know. It's a little small, isn't it? It's a little 0 0.008. This is diameter. I guess it's bigger than I thought it was. So let's try a 0 0.01. Not big enough. We'll get there eventually. 
18-sided, we can actually get away with mm, probably six sides on this. Yeah, be all right. It, it's uh, something that's not viewed very easily in the sim. So let's see. We need one, two, three segments. I think. Well, no, that's probably a little fat. Let's go with 104. That will work. Okay, so let's go back to the top and move this up here in the range of what we want. According to that, it's fat. Well, so <laughs> who am I to say? Fat folks is friendly folks. Okay. Convert that to polygon mode. Let's go to the uh, right. I'm sorry, left view. Hello. Left viewport. Select this bad boy. I agree. It looks still looks a little large, so we'll scale it down. Anytime you scale something down, do not scale it at the object level. Scale it at the sub-object level. So. We'll do that in a minute. Let's just uh, get this thing out here where we need it to be. We're going to move this out. Is there a thing? Is it? It's not even drawn on the side view, is it? Nope. Oh, well, so much for three views. We do the best we can. Alright, where is it? Am I hiding it? Yeah. Why? I got long on that, didn't I? Alright, we'll bring it back to here. And... Well, let's just kind of tuck it in the wing here and see if it'll fit. If not, we'll... Why don't you stick it right in my glass lens? Why don't you? Okay. I think this will be all right. All right, and then we're going to uh, usually you have select a poly here, and we want to ignore back facing. Select this poly right here, and we're going to spend more time searching and scrolling over here on the command panel. We'll do something about like this. And we're going to uh, do something like that. And we're going to pull this back. Sort of like that. And then we're going to let's make sure that's all selected. And we're going to uh, now let's see. Let's go to the front to do this. What I want to do is, I need to do it all. First, you select all the vertices first. It needs to be a two step operation here. We're going to squeeze this down like it's supposed to be. Okay. And then we're going to. Make that more narrow. We could probably just weld them just to save a poly and some vertices. Let's just weld that. Weld. And weld. That's kind of sort of like almost what a <laughs> pito looks like. Alright, and then we're going to bring this down. See what else we need to do here. Oh. Oh yeah, need to go narrow. Sort of like that there. I don't know, that's a rough shape of a pito. You could play with it to meet your own standards, but uh, 
That's kind of sort of like almost a uh, pito. And you can texture that up and make it look pretty fancy, actually. Okay, so we got that part done. We need to link it to the wing. And that's done. Okay, so we got the pito done. Um, get the nav light cut in. So we need to now set pivots on their control surfaces. So let's uh, hide everything we got here. Let's go hide unselected <coughs> and set these control surface pivots for animation. And hide by name. Let's go down to the uh, left wing and then hide the two flaps and the aileron. All right, go to top view. Setting pivots for animation. It's kind of a precise work. You saw that when we did it for the uh, nose gear doors. Same deal here. So uh, we'll take one at a time here. And this is a good time to use wireframe because you can line up with these with these lines here. Now remember the pivots on these ailerons and flaps are not out here on the edge. They're up here in this heavy rounded part or somewhere in between. Who knows? Maybe it depends on the aircraft. <coughs> so uh, we're going to choose uh, probably the second line. And to do that, let's just kind of zoom in here in the general area. And let's select this part. Let's find its pivot. Center to object, align the world. That's a good starting point. Then we're going to rotate this around so that the second line here appears as vertical as we can make or as horizontal as we can make it. Doesn't matter. We want simply want a line on that. So let's we're, we've got effect pivot only so we can move this. We're in local mode here so we can move this up to that line zoom in here as far as you can zoom and take it up and place the center of this blue deal right on it then we're going to rotate it so that the red arrow pointer is down on that line okay so now we have it lined up on the uh, x-axis. Now let's go to the front viewport and we'll need to line it up on this axis too. Unfortunately we don't have a line down the middle there but we'll just have to do the best we can. We can move it down and move it back or whatever. So and you may find you'll have to do this two or three times so don't feel upset if you don't get it right the first time. Oops, wrong grabbed the wrong axis here. There it is. And so it looks about as right as I can get it on this view. So back to the top then to say front or rear, either one. A lot of times you can just zoom out and get a sense if that pointer stays in the designated area. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Alright, so that one hopefully is good to go. So let's select the uh, resist aileron and let's uh, get the pivot in the general area, line it to world. Then we're on effect pivot only. We don't want to move the object. We're going to do the same thing here. <coughs> Excuse me. Zoom in as tight as we can get for accuracy. And then rotate this around. Uh, that looks pretty decent. Let's see if it stays on the line when I zoom out. Yeah, it's pretty good that way. Let's go to the front and zoom in. And we need 
need to get some help here. Notice I'm just staying outside the circle here, so I'm just rotating your view around. So kind of like turning your head one way or the other. And I'm lining up the, this line here parallel to the top so I can it's the only reference I have. <clears throat> and then we'll rotate that so that it's as horizontal and or vertical as we can get it. And I'd say that looks pretty good. So we'll go with that. Okay. Those two are done. Now let's see if we can grab the split flap here. And we're going to want this um, <clears throat> because this is hinged right on the very end. This is not, I mean, it is a rotating thing, but generally it's uh, hinged right on the end. So let's uh, get the pivot for that, get it centered, and then move it up <clears throat> to here. Zoom in as tight as we can get. Put it right on that hinge line. That looks good. Let's go to the front. Or, yeah, front. <clears throat> and let's see I'm at the front, so this will be the top line. Let's just see if we can get that somewhat up here for a reference. So, rotate this, uh -huh. wasn't zoomed in all the way, and what happens when the pivot is off, you know, and you see it animated, <laughs> you know, it would be animating as if you had a, <coughs> had it on a long hinge stuck inside the wing somewhere, and it would animate away from the, Away from the wing instead of staying up, you know, as if it were attached to it. So it's just the way things go. That should be good. It works there. Let's go to the top again and check it. Looks like we're on it. Okay, we're good. So we have all that done. Let's go back to bottom view here. So we have the control surfaces. There's one thing I forgot to do is uh, put a back surface on this on this flap so that when it's down you're not seeing through it. So I guess we should do that right now. Let's see, we're gonna <coughs> call this, uh, no I call it left flap. What I wanted to do was <coughs> take off that underscore because L underscore flap is an animated term. So convert this to mesh, and you remember why, of course. We're going to flip those polys to the upper side, and we should give it a little uh, thickness. We'll extrude that. Just a little bit. <clears throat> Let's undo that. I wanted to make a point here. Because Flight Sim, or the export <clears throat> to Flight Sim, welds everything 0 0.004 or closer. Whenever you're doing something like this, you need to make sure you're going more. Looking at this uh, rollout here, make sure you're going more than 0 0.004. And uh, we usually go on things like this, like 11, 14, 16, and that would be sufficient for that. <coughs> and uh, once we have that, then we can select all the all those bad boys and uh, clear them and smooth them, I guess. I think it's all right. There's uh, don't have to worry too much about aerodynamics. This is flow from the inside and the outside. So, you know, I suppose you could 
pointy that edge a little bit, but I don't think it's necessary. All right, now that we have that, we need to link it to the uh, other side. Flap 2. So that when this side is animated, this one follows it. <coughs> okay, so we have that done. Now I think we have all the control surfaces done. So let's uh, unhide the wing and all of its uh, children. What is that cylinder? Oh, look what we did here. So we do have to do something about that. When I extruded that, it comes up through the. So let's see here. No problem. What we'll do is just. Well, I'll say no problem. I've said that before, right? <coughs> We're going to take these two vertices right here. Let's make sure we got two vertices. Probably this one and this one, and we're just going to move that back and move it down so they're not we're not uh, intruding on the uh, upper surface edge. We still may be some well we won't because uh, this flap actually. <clears throat> stays in an open position. We may as well uh, let's go to the uh, left side. Can't see it, of course, until we rotate up. <clears throat> we may as well just go ahead and rotate that down and have it in position. We'll, we'll have to do the other side when we get there. So, what do we got here? Left flap. Hello, left flap. Pivot only. What did we do? Align that on the wrong edge? <laughs> sure did. Let's see here. That's what happens when you're working in wireframe mode. Some, sometimes you get confused. So we got that. Let's move this down to this edge. And let's. Uh, not getting too much far here. Let's just hide on selected and zoom in on this the best we can. Go in the wireframe mode. Effect pivot only. In as far as I can get here. All right. Let's do this. Change this up to. Uh, Line the world. <clears throat> and we'll just re rotate it here. Okay, let's go to the uh, front viewport and see if we can find level here. That's almost level. Do here. Okay, that's pretty decent. All right. So now back to the left side, and let's. Uh, so we have a reference. Now go back and unhide. You guys are getting a full bean of all this. It, uh, there is a lot that goes into it, and uh, why is, why, what's left flap? What did I do wrong here? Okay, unhide. Are you guys watching me? Make sure I don't make mistakes. I'm getting. I'm doing my fair share here. Since I moved that, and it's at an angle. Of 
course that means I'm just juiced up everything else. Let's go to the bottom view. Alright, let's go to the back view. Okay. Looks like maybe I got it finally. Thanks for your patience. Alright, back to the uh, <laughs> Hiding the wing parts. All right, jeez, that's there now. Okay, we want to rotate this, and we want to do it on the local. We'll double check, but yeah, that's right. And if you look at the picture that I showed in the previous, let me see if I can pull it up right quick. Let's see, right here. If you look at this picture, let me zoom in. <clears throat> You'll see it hangs down by, what, about 20 degrees or so. It's basically almost level. It's just a little more than, it droops a little bit, as you can see here. So that's what we're trying to do, drop that split flap that much. So we'll just rotate it around and Try to give it a similar appearance. Just slightly below level. Alright, there we go. So now remember we created this box inside so we wouldn't have the see through. Well, this is why, because this is the way this split flap runs normally to let air flow through here. <coughs> so we have it. And that looks like that's rotated okay on the hinge. So now I think we've got everything linked, working, built, functioning. <clears throat> and uh, let's see if there's anything frozen here. Unfreeze on. Cylinder is the pito, right? Let's give that a proper name. P I T O T. Left. All right, so we've got everything we need. Now, let's just unhide all. Just make it simpler. Get rid of uh, calibration box. We we'll just delete this cutting tool here, and uh, we're now going to delete this wing <coughs> and re-clone it, if you will, and propagate it to the other side. Now you may recall the process we went through. Oh, we got it all up here. What's right flap? Where is that? Oh, it was hiding. We ended up with two of those down there and we would say, why is, what's, what's going on there? Okay. With that, let's turn on the grid. Let's hide unselected. Now I just get that stuff out of our way now that we know what we've got. <coughs> hide unselected. And we'll go through the process then of okay, let's make sure we got to be in selected move mode. Okay, that's in good shape. So we're going to we're ready to clone and mirror this to the other side. We'll make this the right wing while we're at it. Otherwise, we'll just have to. Well, remember on on yours. <laughs> there we go. You may have to use the mirror tool down here. I think it was was it the Z? Yes. We can go ahead and collapse that. Collapse the stack is what you call that. Let's go to the front to make sure. Yes, it's doing well there for us. Okay. So we've got that part. Let's do the aileron. We just worked down the list here. And we'll check to see that. Oh. Mm, I done a baddie. Now we're going to clone this. <laughs> If we clone it this way, we'll have to physically move it into place after I went through all the trouble of setting the pivots. I forgot about that. Uh, 
Now, it, you can do it. It's just a pain in the butt, and you're not going to get it perfect. So the best thing you can do, uh, now that I've shown you at least how to set the pivots, I'll have to go back through the process. I'm not going to do it again for you on video, but uh, in order to uh, just to show you the process, we're going to set this to zero so that we can... Uh, and I think if we don't really, if we don't do the whole thing, center to object, line to world, it's not going to go over there correctly. So we just need to do the reset. Sorry about that, folks, but at least you know the process of placing those pivots. And so uh, one, and we'll make this the right. Okay. <clears throat> and then we can mirror it on the z-axis with perfect placement collapse to stack and I guess while we're doing it we could go ahead and link it to the wing remember we had to do I did that last time before okay let's see back pivot only center to object line the world and Gotta get this number to show up so you can change it. Otherwise, it won't. Okay, so it's there. Now we can clone it, give it the proper name, right flap, and then modify and mirror it on the Z axis. Collapse the stack. And link it. So that one's done. Now we've got the bottom, bottom flap. Where is it? Like left. Where's the bottom flap? Hmm. Is it there? It's not there. It must not have been linked. I didn't unhide it. So it would be. Let's see, left flap O2. Is that it? Left flap enter. Yep, that's it. Okay. Let's go to the bottom. Yeah, now it's there. So I guess that's not linked to the left wing. I thought I did that. Or I just somehow missed it. Let's make sure it's linked. Anyhow left wing before we proceed with what we're doing. <coughs> yep, it's there. Okay, let's uh, reset the pivot. Hmm. Line the world. Move it a little bit so we get this number to show up and undo the move. Put the zero there. Now we've got it at the center of the GMAX world. Now we can clone it. Call it two and right side, and then let's go mirror it on the z-axis. Appears to be there. Collapse the stack. Okay. Collapse the stack, and then uh, link it. that wing. Let's see what we got here now. We got wing, flap, flap, wing. Or aileron, flap, flap. Where's the inner? We didn't pick up the inner. Bad boy, bad boy. Okay, super. Should have done that together, I guess. That's alright, no problem. Uh, set the pivot. Centered object, line the world. Uh, oops. Get it on zero and do that little move so we can get this. There we go. <coughs> now we can clone it. Uh, right flap enter. And then we 
can go to modify and mirror it on the y axis. Collapse the stack. And what I want to link that to is come in here close so we can get on it. It'll let us get on it. Why is it not picking that up? There we go. There we go. Let's see if that took right flap enter. Okay. Okay, now we're to nav lens. Go to the top. Probably not what we wanted to do here. Takes a little time, but it's uh, it's all good. It's all good. Oops. Got to be careful about that stuff. Move that. Undo the move. Give it a zero. Now we can clone it. And uh, we'll call that right. Oops. Right. Nav lens. Now we can modify and mirror. Mirror. Collapse the stack. Where did it go? Where did it go? Zoom in on it. Uh, oh. Okay. Undo. Undo. <laughs> I forgot to change the axis. There. It's over there. You gotta watch me every minute, folks. <laughs> okay. Now that it's there, we can link it to the right wing or yeah the right wing also the correct wing okay we got one more the pito right yes we do okay let's pull out <coughs> and uh, we'll expect to the only center of the object line in the world and we need to wake it up back to zero. Now we can clone. That's two three R. Just to help it, you know. Well, I'll tell you in a second. Let's see, have I cloned it? Yes. So I'm ready to mirror it. <laughs> and we want it on the oh it's there. Let's make sure it's well why does that work? I don't know. Go with it. See if it's facing the right direction, pointing up and all that. Yep. Good. So, do we have e equivalent number of parts on both sides? We've got nav lens. Why is that up there? We've got one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six. What am I missing? Oh, we got the pito. We have it linked. See? Catch me sleeping. Trying to work and trying to talk. And explain. I guess I'm not too good at that. I'm not a teacher, a tutor, or a, or a uh, presenter. So, you just, you get what you get. Okay. Oops. There we have, I think. Let's check the front view. See if everything looks kosher. This does not look kosher. What's going on back here? That is messed up somehow. Whatever. I don't like it, so let's just delete it. And back to front. And let's try it from the bottom. Let's also try doing both at the same time. I don't know if it'll work or not, but I don't think it will because it, it uh, line the world because 
Let's see, it won't let you. I don't think it will. No, they won't bring up. So we got to do one at a time. <coughs> Center the object, line the world. Zero. Okay, we'll clone it. We'll call that right lap O2. Okay. We'll mirror it on the Y axis. See if it got it that time. It doesn't. I don't, I don't know why. It's like, oh, it's because of the pivot. It's because of the pivot. Didn't I reset that? I thought I did. Back up. Back up. Undo clone. <coughs> Let's see here. These are the things you run into, folks, as you're uh, as you're going through this. Back pivot only. Center the object. Line the world. And uh, shuffle it a little bit here. Undo that back to here. Okay. Now you can't accuse me of doing it three times yet. I've only done it twice. So just make sure I didn't mess up the, the process. Alright, so it's cloned. We now need to mirror it. Just make sure that's the right modifier. And we want it on the Z axis. That still does not look right. Don't know what to tell you folks. I guess we'll have to manually place it. That's the only thing I know to know to do. Straighten out the foolishness. Okay, it's uh I'm not gonna waste your time in in uh trying to sort that out right now, but We'll go ahead and do this one. So we'll have it over there anyhow. Okay, effect pivot only, center an object, line the world. Move it and undo it so we can get something down here to change. Okay, we've got it, so <coughs> now we can clone it. Right enter. And uh, mural on the y axis. Collapse the stack. And we need to link it. Well, at least the two go to go over there wrong together, so <laughs> it's not like they're uh, curious why that doesn't pick up. That link. It's fine that it does it there, but I can't see both at the same time. There we go. Maybe I can see if I got it to the uh, right thing there. Yeah, I did. Or did I? Right flap. Left flap. Link to right flat. Okay. All right. I'll position that manually. And uh, that's what you run into sometimes, particularly on uh, things that that, are, uh, that you want to animate. And you think this is fun, you should wait till we get the gear with the uh, many parts and the gear set up. <coughs> well, I'll try to keep that simple for you. Okay, so it looks like we have both of the wings and all the parts, and they're all linked appropriately. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five.
five, six. So we got the same number of parts both sides. Let's unhide bunny. Drop back that and that. Do an invert. And there we have some semblance of an aircraft. All we need now are uh, the tail section and the gear to kind of wrap this up. And for me to do something about that anomaly, of course, that's a pretty good looking progress uh, here in 25 uh, videos that are hmm, probably 30 minutes on average. We made pretty good progress. This is a simple aircraft in that uh, we don't have exterior engines and a lot of other things going on. But uh, you'll find as we keep adding parts, this hierarchy of things is important to manage. Uh, most of my projects have somewhere between 800 and 1200 parts. So this is becomes a very long list. So that's why we uh, try to manage your parts the best you can. Everything's connected to the fuselage, links to the fuselage. If it's connected to the wings, link to the wings. If it's connected to an engine, link to the engine. If it's connected to a gear, gear part and the gear parts are part of the engine, subordinate to the engine, those all should be under that engine. So, so if you wanted everything on the left wing, all of its parts, and they become many if you have gear or engines and gear under those engines, <coughs> you may have uh, you know, 100 parts or more. So uh, managing your hierarchy of parts is really important. So keep that in mind and and you'll do fine in learning how to use uh, the invert versus you know the select by subtree uh, and select invert just to save time and getting the parts out here to work on a reference that you need as you're getting work done so uh, very good uh, long video did a lot of stuff made a lot of mistakes but uh, that's how we learn see how we respond to those mistakes and uh, anyhow I hope it was very instructional and uh, hope you were as confused as I were, was at times and but you know we get through it and you just keep pressing on figure out ways around things uh, that's how we learn uh, if you saw everything go correctly how would you respond when you made a mistake so it's important to, to see it all as it, raw as it happens okay I'm gonna let you out of here and uh, I hope uh, you can take something away from this that's beneficial. So have a good day.